Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, May 2nd, 2019 regular meeting of the school committee. We have just returned from our executive session and we are calling our public session to order now. Uh, I would ask for those who are here in the um, library with us who would like to join us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance to please rise. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So we are going to uh, pick up our agenda with the um, item four, which is the public hearing for school choice. And I would uh, entertain a motion to open the public hearing at this time. So moved. Motion by Amanda and a second. Second. Second by Meg. And we'll do a roll call. And Amanda, I'll start with you. Aye. Meg. Aye. Yes. Jen and Mina. Aye. And I am also a yes. So we have a public uh, hearing and is now open on school choice. I don't know if you want to say anything before we... Surely. So you know that annually you have to decide whether or not Hopkinton will be a school choice district. Um, I believe that we have to get our information back to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education before May 30th. And so uh, just by way of a recommendation, I would recommend that we are not a school choice district given our sort of exploding enrollment. So this would be an opportunity for public to come speak on that matter and seeing no public, um, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. So motion by Amanda, a second by Meg, and we'll have a roll call. Amanda? Aye. Meg? Aye. Jen? Yes. Nina? Aye. And I am also a yes. The uh, public uh, hearing is now closed. And are we taking a vote on this down the line or are we taking a vote on this right now we'll take a vote on it's this a new, yeah I don't think I see it anywhere else okay. in the agenda so uh, in that case um, I would seek a motion uh, I, did you have a particular wording that we needed to have on that I think it's oh it's right there eight, yeah where new business right under oh it I'm is sorry it is mm -hmm. on there new business yeah um, well we can take it out of order since we were just doing it so sure. I would Seek a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendation not to participate in school choice for the 2019-2020 school year. So moved. Motion by Amanda. Second. Second. Second by Jan. Jen. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. And so we are. We will not be a school choice uh, participating in school choice next school year. So that brings us down uh, to. Do we have uh, any? We have no public comment because we have no public here. But do we have any recognitions for this evening? Okay. So we had so many nice, lovely ones last time. We did them all last week. Yeah. So then that would bring us into reports. We do not have student council here, so we can move right into the superintendent's report. Okay. I'll just move through these slides very quickly. Uh, so uh, here you can just see some of our uh, students at the world robotics competition in Kentucky. And I think the interesting thing about uh, the picture on the right is that uh, our students are enjoying lunch with students from Tunisia. Oh. That was kind of neat. That is cool. Yeah. Uh, these are just some pictures from last weekend's Into the Woods, the middle school drama. Beautiful. I heard it was amazing. See you on each year. Oh, nice. All right. There you go. Uh, this, this was a question that came up to us. Um, just coincidentally, yesterday when we went to the moderators meeting, so they wanted to know what is the grant and who are the trustees of the grant. Uh, last year, the trustees of the grant were very gracious and they funded a math pre-teaching program at the Elmwood School. It's something that Mr. McCann actually brought to the school. As opposed to remediating kids who struggle, what they do is teach math concepts prior to the kids actually um, finding them in the classroom, so or encountering them in the classroom. So they choose the kids who are, you know, in the bottom um, performing ranks in the STAR math assessment that's given in the fall, and then they put them into small groups of four. They create five groups of four, and they are taught lessons. And the objective is really to make math, you know, fun and less daunting for them. So in the upper left-hand corner, you can see there's a quote from a parent. It was fun and engaging for my son. He really started liking math. And I think that was the purpose of the entire program. So it ran from November to April. It's finished now. Mr. McCann has put together a lovely uh, sort of synopsis of report at the end of this. And I just wanted to take a moment to thank the trustees of the school's grant because it was really wonderful that they were able to fund the, uh, the teachers to put on this program. 
Uh, you can see that we've had EHOP uh, Know Your Vote, and this morning the Chamber of Commerce did the State of the Town. So both of those events have prepped us for um, annual town meeting, which will happen on Monday, next Monday evening, and Tuesday, and Maybe Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Possibly Wednesday. Um, and then I will just leave this slide up there because this is something that we would be looking for a vote on later in the agenda. Okay. And I think that's all I have. Okay. And uh, that moves us into the school committee chair report. And I have approved the payroll warrant S19022. The payroll warrant has been included in your packet. Uh, and as you know, we had uh, school committee office hours today at the Senior Center, which was a lot of fun. Um, I don't know if people had anything in particular they wanted to share that was raised, because um, I know we had some side conversations with some people at the Senior Center. We didn't all hear the same. Uh, I did have uh, one gentleman who had some questions on the bus parking lot, um, which I, I think I was able to answer with some satisfaction to him. So, Anybody else have anything? Um. I know we're trying to curtail it, but I do want to share one thing. I, I was trying to, I, I'm actually very thankful that uh, Amy Beck, the director of the Senior Center, has, will, has been so willing to partner with us in forging a relationship here. Um, there were many comments that I hear mm -hmm. uh, when I'm there at the Senior Center. And today, as I was encouraging people, there was one uh, um, senior member who was there who shared a story of some kids in uh, Boulder. Uh, Colorado that she had read about and she said uh, and she was very interested about bullying and what goes on in our district and she shared the story where on a bus there were uh, there was a kid who was giving a hard time to another child and a girl stood up and she said you're not doing the right thing so she stood up for this friend who was being bullied and uh, it seems that some other kids also gathered around and they figured out there is strength in um, you know, voice and support and numbers. So she shared that and, uh, you know, she wanted to know more about what is it that we are doing. Um, and if we are, you know, making some role play, she talked about that they had practiced mm -hmm. role play. Um, so I, I really um, am very happy that our seniors continue to stay engaged mm -hmm. um, and give their feedback. Nice. Thank you, and thank you very much to you for setting that up for us and helping to establish that connection for us in the community. So other than that, I think the only thing I really the, I participated in of note was the moderators meeting to get ready with uh, some of the other town leaders for the um, town meeting next week. And we have posted for our, for I think just three days, so hopefully we're not going into a fourth day, but so that we can have a little bit of time if we need to discuss anything before the meeting to prep for it, we are posted for 6.30. So that is... Um, I could read this, but where are we posted for? Is there a particular room in the, oh, in this, in the middle school that we're posted location? I think we are just posted for the auditorium. Okay. Is that... We... Look it up. Are we posted for room? In past years, we have been posted first and for the principal's conference room. So I think that see. if you take a look at that, I, I think I posted okay. there okay. first and okay. then the auditorium. Thank you. Right. Saves me from reading. Do, it. Does anybody have liaison reports? No. There are, but tonight. I, uh, okay. All right. And we've already covered school choice, which um, shockingly really actually brings us up to uh, 745 was the school physician's contract. So we're really not far behind. Okay. And so the mm -hmm. school physician's contract is actually in your packet under new business. And you can see that our school physician is Dr. Boder. Um, the amount that we would be suggesting for her contract for this year is $7,086, um, or at least not to succeed, $7,086. And I'm just looking for a vote to um, approve the school physician's contract for the 1920 school year. And that $7,086 includes a 2.5% uh, increase. I just saw her this morning. Mm. She's a doctor for both my kids. I move. Is she's a pediatrician? Yeah. I don't know. Have we? Has she been our physician for some time? Yes. She's great. Yeah. She's yeah. really great. So, uh, I, I'm sorry. There was a motion there to approve. Yes. Okay. And is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. And it is uh, unanimous and so moves. And I have a am experiencing a technical difficulty here with my agenda. Here. 
Oh, nope, I got it back. Thank you. Uh, so that brings us up to the school committee, school calendar subcommittee, Dr. Cavanaugh. Okay. So you will recall when we were going through the process of approving our calendar, the issue of what dates do we have off from school came up. And I do agree that given the changes in our demographics and the changes in things that people, you know, recognize, honor, and celebrate, it probably is time to bring a whole group from the community together and really take a good look at the calendar and decide what we would want it to look at so that it reflect, better reflects the um, diversity and, and thoughts about equity and uh, inclusion in our district. So what I'm looking for this evening is um, your approval to form a school calendar subcommittee. Um, Dr. Kavanaugh, a couple of quick questions here. <coughs> I'm all in favor of bringing community voices and doing this work. Um, you have a lot going on with all the work around growth and whatnot, um, and, and we have a lot of subcommittees. Are you looking for any participation from any school committee members in this committee? If a school committee member wanted to join this, I would more than welcome that, absolutely. Okay. Um, and do you think that this is something, uh, how long do you think this uh, work would last? Do you have any estimate at the moment? <coughs> Sort of in my ideal world, it would be a summer project, but it's hard to say that you know it wouldn't continue. I guess I wouldn't want to rush the work if we sure. felt like the work that we were doing was you know, of really high quality and depth. Right. And and you think from a timing perspective, it's better to do it now rather than do it say next year. Uh, given all that you have, I'm just being mindful of your time and energy to this project. And I'm not saying that this is not important. Mm -hmm. I think this work is important. Um, but just trying to prioritize. And I will go with uh, just asking for your I think feedback. I would like to begin it in the summer. You know, okay. there, there's that sort of you know, more relaxed feeling in the summer okay. that happens. And if we can at least start the work, I mean, it would be wonderful if it, if it concluded. But you know, we will be, next January, looking to approve another calendar. So I would like to get, get started, I think, in the summer. OK. Thank you. Sure. How many Thank members you. Are, are you looking for on this? Well, I'm thinking that we probably need to have some, you know, some of the administrators in our school, maybe someone from either the HTA or, you know, someone at least within the Teachers Association, and then folks from town, and then a school committee member. So we could be a group of 10, 12. Okay. So, and typically when we form a subcommittee, this, the school committee would then approve the actual um, membership of it. Do you want to bring that back? Sure. Just uh, maybe on the 16th. For Absolutely. The, and this would allow you to get started with okay. the preliminary. Does that and make I, sense? And I think the charter, too. Uh, some, some verbiage. That's Again. what we agreed last time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's um, policy BDE, which I'm looking at at the moment. And that's <laughs> that's impressive. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. So do we want to just make one full motion at the time, or do you want us to? No, I think a full motion at the time is fine. Okay. Sure. Then that moves us into uh, item D, which is the turf field fundraising. So this is, I, I wanted to bring a follow-up back from, um, I, I know this also came up at our appropriations hearing, which is that when the turf fields were approved last year, the um, school committee at the time had committed to working to raise $500,000 um, to offset the debt service on that. And at it, the committee, the group of people working in the fundraising, uh, Gene Birchman is one, Jim Ballas, uh, John Graziano, and they have solicited any business in this local area you could almost imagine uh, and have not come back with any grant money from them. Uh, they are continuing to work at that, and there are some they have not heard back from. But as a result, the fundraising is significantly be behind where they had anticipated. So that is one point. Uh, the other point that had been brought to me, which I sort of liked, but it needs to be vetted with the turf field group themselves, was to to have a separate group, perhaps, that does different types of fundraising rather than just reaching out to local businesses, Some a model kind of like what some of the library group did. Um, and it would be, again, a different fundraising group than who is working on this other stuff. But maybe they could do an event that benefits the turf field or even pull in like tax relief or something. To, multiple groups that could have multiple beneficiaries um, because certainly that was a tax issue as well. Or we could stick to just turf, but I just wanted to update you guys to let you know where it, things stand and that 
we need to look kind of beyond where we can bring money in so so we can honor our commitment is it directly attached to us as a school <coughs> committee this turf field so fundraising the turf the turf field fundraising is not our it, it is not our the five of us are not responsible for the fundraising but we would be perhaps responsible for identifying a group that would work working kind of and that's to, to kind of look to authorize a group to fundraise on our behalf Nancy would we also have to get involved in case what was proposed to be raised through fundraising falls a little short so it, the amount that was approved was not they are not going to take away from our school budget for example if it if we don't raise it but it's a good faith that we had Sure. It had been promised that they would continue to work on raising the money in an attempt to raise this. And the library, I know, has has done a trem tremendous job at raising money. I think they've raised a lot. I don't want to misquote I the name, but oh, one point over a million dollars is what I remember. Yeah. Is there a reason why the existing subcommittee restricted its efforts to just corporate solicitation and didn't pursue? So it, it's a not actually a subcommittee; it's just a fundraising group, and that that was that was the piece that they were comfortable with. They were not. We, there has not been a group kind of looked at to do other types of fundraising. But the athletic fields subcommittee is was not a it, fundraising group. Is it defunct at this point, or is it is it still a? There, there is still a there is still a group for the turf field, the athletic fields, yes. But it's not a fundraising group. It's not, that doesn't fall within the scope of what was approved for them. Okay. So. One last thought, Nancy. Yeah. I know fundraising is not easy. Um, and uh, I am not in their shoes, but just throwing an idea yeah. out there. Given that we are, you know, one of the top schools in Massachusetts, what if we reach out to, say, Nike or one of these big companies and ask they for something? They have reached out, yeah. They have, you know, to they kind have of reached do out to a lot of big companies, right? yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, and have not had the success that they had anticipated. A couple mm -hmm. of particular companies mm -hmm. would be interested that have not. I think part of the difficulty lies in the fact that the turf field has been built. Exactly. And it's harder to raise the money after the fact than it is before. Although it uh, is a choice time right now because I, according to all spring athletes with whom I've spoken, um, it is has been a godsend. They haven't had to cancel baseball and softball. I mean, in lacrosse, they, I mean, it is a much already a much loved resource. So I wonder if it might be a good time. So that to that's reach out. that's really my point is to to look. They will continue that group that is working with reaching out to corporate and continue reaching out to more and to plug along with what they're doing, but it, it could be that we need to look to another group to do a different type of fundraising. So, so it's our responsibility. It is not, we are not gonna fundraise the five of us, but we we would need to kind of approve, uh, a ask a group to, you know, see if we could work on that. And that I, I would come back with that because I am the turf field okay. liaison. Okay, you so are I'm, the turf I, I will come back person. Back. Do I am not personally going to okay. do all the fundraising. I will help with the fundraising, but I, it's, I it, it needs a group. You do it. <laughs> do we know it will need what a group. We need to raise what's left to be raised to uh, get to the goal. A, a lot. lot. Okay. I, there was there because there has have not been any corporate sponsorship. There's a GoFundMe. Okay. Um, that has raised a little bit of that raised a little bit of money beforehand, but so we will keep plugging away. Okay. That's that's my update. Thank you. So that brings us into the bullying report. Okay, so I will just be very brief. Um, Georgette and I reviewed the numbers today. Um, at the Marathon Elementary School, there were two allegations of bullying. One was uh, no findings, and another one is still pending. At Elmwood, if you look at the document, it will look like there were three allegations of bullying, but it's actually the same parent filling it in three times, so there's really just one, and that was found to be not bullying. At Hopkins, there were two allegations of bullying. One was substantiated as bullying, one was not. At the middle school, there was one allegation of bullying, and that uh, case is sort of still pending. And at the high school, there were 10 allegations of bullying. Eight of them were deemed to be bullying. Okay. And that's pretty much the 18, 19, <coughs> you know, how many people uh, filed reports, and how did those reports turn out? Have the numbers increased, or have they dropped? 
Yeah, they stay pretty much about, about okay. the same. I would say that only the high school numbers are up. Okay. Yep. Could I ask, um, are you satisfied with how our policies and our processes were worked? Did you find any need for tweaking or um, us to review anything? No, I think when a principal in the district gets an allegation of bullying, those principals take them very, very seriously. And I think that the investigations are always thorough. Um, last year at this time, I can remember working through a case with Mrs. Carver and I mean, we would work on that case it's sort of day and night and continue to collect data and do student interviews. And, and I think that they are all very, very thorough in, in the way the process works, so. Okay. And so our, the, the reporting worked. We got the reports. The, the part that we oversee seems to be effective to your judgment. Yeah, interestingly, okay. when we put the bullying report online for a while folks were filling it in and whatever the mechanism was it wasn't forwarding that on to the principals <coughs> so we caught that and now you know when somebody fills it in it's actually kind of um, advantageous for us so if a person doesn't use the online form and they use the written form the principal then will take it and type it into the spreadsheet where the online form uploads to um, manually. But if not, all of that is recorded in there, so it makes it very easy when Linda Henderson and Lisa Cardi are actually doing their state reporting. Um, now the state asks us to record the allegation, the findings, and the target. Um, and they do that not only for bullying, but also for harassment. Okay. Uh, Dr. Kavanaugh, I had earlier shared that story. Is there any possibility to look into some of the best practices around the country and um, re-looking at some of you know these new ideas that are coming up uh, and incorporating them somehow in the process? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have no problem doing that. I think, so what happens with DESE is they make you file your um, bullying intervention and prevention plan, and you have to do that every other year. So what happens is uh, there's you know, typically a group of about 15 people who meet. It will involve a head nurse, it involves the school resource officer, <coughs> several principals, school committee members, and you actually go through the whole process of looking through your bullying plan or anti-bullying plan. So that might be something for that group to take a look at. We did make some good changes, I thought, last time we did it, which was about a year ago now. And when we did it, there had been scenarios in there and you could sort of read the scenario and try to make the determination of whether it was or was not bullying. And those felt so gray that we felt like those were just confusing people as opposed to helping them learn, you know, what really did and didn't constitute bullying. So we removed them. Hmm. But yes, I think that's a good charge for our next committee. Yeah, that would be, and you know, I always keep going back to uh, your words, kind is the new cool. Mm -hmm. so, you know, what did you say? Kind is the new cool. Mm. The, uh, those are not my words, those are Dr. Kavanaugh's words. Yeah, and I really stole them from a bulletin board in another district, so <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really pretty nice, though. Thank yeah. you for being there. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, All right so the strategic priority objective, um, that was the last slide in my report, but I'm wondering if before we leave I can return to that report because there is something else that I wanted to share with the committee um, and it was something that we were going to cover in executive session, but we haven't done that. But I, I feel like what I can Great. say um, in, in the public session is certainly worth it. So um, I am looking for <coughs> approval of that strategic priority objective document from which the district improvement plan will be developed. And you know, we had the public hearing last time we were together and I think that you know the community has had an opportunity to really take a very good look at it. So I'm just looking for your approval of that document. So I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Amanda to approve. Second. Second by Mina. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Great. Sure. Thank you. Well done. Definitely. So to return to my report, uh, as you know, we have been, we posted for the position of a new student services director. We did that on March 1st. When we did it, we had 20 resumes that were submitted to Kim Polnick, our HR director. Jen Parson, the assistant superintendent, and I went through all of those resumes, and Kim had arranged a you know sort of first round of interviews committee, and on that committee there were two parents, two building principals, the director of technology. I mean, it was a I think 
team chairs, the um, out of district coordinator. So I think it was a, a pretty large and, and formidable group. Uh, the people that we put forth of the six, five of them were already sitting special education directors in other districts. So they were people who were very seasoned and had an awful lot of experience. One of them was an assistant director of student services in another district. So any one of the six we saw as people who had the skill set to you know, sort of come in and, and do the job for us. I was not on the committee, Mrs. Rothermick wasn't, Jen wasn't, but we were supposed to be that next round of, of interview. <coughs> and the committee put forth only one candidate. And when Mrs. Rothermick and Ms. Parson and I interviewed that person, uh, we really just felt like she was not going to be the right fit for our district. So right now we are in a position where we don't have anyone slated to go into that position. And I'm certainly not asking for you know, any kind of a vote or anything like that right now. We can bring this back in a couple of weeks. But I think that because it's so late in the year and because we have someone who has been doing the job in our district, and I think if we look at you know something like the CISP rubric, I think that I would say that many of the things that are on that rubric she does successfully. And so I am um, recommending to you that Dr. Zaleski be the candidate that moves forward for next year. Um, and that's just you know something that the committee can mull over for a couple of weeks and you know sort of think hard about uh, whether or not that's a direction that you would want to go in. So, so I knew we're not going to deliberate. Oh, no, I just wanted to ask a question. Mm -hmm. So she would be the interim director while we perform a new search? Well, I'm not necessarily sure that we would call her an interim director just because she is currently our, our director, but I think that that would be part of negotiations, <laughs> okay. right? And, and when would the new search begin? I don't know that answer, but probably... I don't know, December. I mean, I think that if, if you're looking to do another search, you would want to do that earlier than March 1st. Yes. yes. Can you? Uh, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I, I just have a quick question. I don't see it on the agenda. Am I looking at the wrong agenda? Report. It's she's, we're not having a deliberation okay. on it. No, okay. right. We're not deliberating. And I just wanted just to share with you <coughs> that that search is now busted, the original search. Okay. okay. So we will come back and put this on our next agenda. But just to clarify your recommendation, because you had mentioned the CIS rubric. Do you yeah. just want to explain a little bit about what, what that stands yes. for? Yes. So technically, there's not an actual rubric to evaluate your <laughs> dir uh, director of student services, right? Um, in the same way that there's not an actual rubric for your director of technology or your assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction. So what we kind of do in those positions is we say, you know, what are some of the things in the superintendent's rubric that the assistant superintendent does? And what are some of the things in the building principal rubric that the assistant superintendent does? And we kind of piecemeal it together and have that person put together some goals. Um, the CISP rubric is the one that does sort of those support kinds of services. And so we would, you know, evaluate guidance counselors and team chairs and, and those kinds of folks uh, using that rubric. So that might be helpful for people to sort of take a look at and say, these are some of the tasks that we would hold that person accountable to. Um, obviously, there are the things, I mean, if, even some of the things from the superintendent's rubric might be some of the things that would be handed off to your director of student services. But I think the SIPS rubric is one that kind of gives us a good idea of uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Kavner, what would be the right forum to discuss this in more detail uh, where we can, you know, deliberate um, and possibly receive some feedback even and consider? Uh, sure. So, as you know, um, on our agenda tonight, we had an executive session, and as anyone watching at home could see, our executive session ran really late. So we never got to the second part of that, which was... Um, to talk about a strategy to prepare for negotiations with non-unit personnel, the director of student services. So I would think that an executive session to sort of talk about the parameters of negotiations, which is what we were supposed to do this evening, um, and typically what would happen if um, we were to move in, in that direction, you know, you would authorize me to engage in negotiations. So we'll discuss that on the 16th. I think we should do that in an executive session on the 16th. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, so we are not coming back to executive session tonight then, is that? 
because that's what that's Michelle McNulty well. had. Michelle McNulty had. I think we had looked to see it, oh. how our timeline was. Is yeah. what we had discussed we at the end of our ex that. executive session. We, um, we are not voting tonight on we anything. We left our executive session suspended, right? Oh, we sus okay. We suspended the other one, right. but we did not open the, yes. this item. All right. And because I wasn't at the end of that, I guess yes, I didn't realize you were not how at it the ended. End. So. Yes. Sorry. Okay. So yeah, we can go back in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, right. this brings us to the school department stabilization fund, which is you. Yes. So <laughs> the Legacy Farms host agreement. Um, stated that uh, when the school department received 200 students um, in our classrooms who were all living in legacy farms, uh, we would receive a one-time payment of $500,000, and that money has been paid to the town. So on town meeting floor, uh, we will, uh, there will be uh, an article on the warrant that asks for the town to, with a two-thirds vote, create a stabilization fund, and um, with a majority vote, put the $500,000 into the stabilization fund. And in the event that the school department needs to use that money, it would have to come out with a two-thirds vote and the approval of the school committee as well as the town finance director. And um, for this coming year, 200000 of the $500,000 have been appropriated in the event that we have um, really extreme enrollment and we are in dire straits and need to um, do something to sort of mitigate that that enormous enrollment. And, and the reason why this is on our agenda again tonight is that we did not vote on our recommendation, and the town meeting will actually ask for our recommendation, and we need an official vote for that. But I move. If I was going to say, okay, there a motion go. by Mina and a second by Meg. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. And um, so we will move that along with our recommendation. I at think they'll meeting. be pleased to know that because they were looking at the moderator's <laughs> meeting if we had that yet. So. so, and that brings us into item H, which is the superintendent's evaluation. All right, I know that in the last week we have talked an awful <coughs> lot about this. Uh, you have all of the rubric criteria, but I think that the criteria that um, you don't have yet are just the progress on the goals. And so, oops, I suppose I can. There's plenty there. Um, just walk you through this document. You will remember that these goals were the ones that I had presented in the summer. We brought them back a couple of times. Um, on During occasional superintendent's reports, we go back to them and think a little bit about the progress. And one of the things that the um, evaluation will ask you to do is to talk about whether or not there has been progress, significant progress, met or exceeded these goals. Um, one of the things that we should talk about relative to the evaluation process is that as each individual person fills out um, that form or, you know, a document that sort of mirrors the form that I had given you last time, that does become part of public record. So if anyone wanted to take an individual's um, evaluation materials, they could access that even though it's only the sort of collective one that would be read publicly. So with my first goal, establishing a three-year strategic plan, um, I think I have moved through all of those steps. Uh, the, the last piece is to develop the district plan that will be drawn from uh, the strategic objective document that you just approved. Obviously, that document will come here, will go through the public hearing process, and it will be as you know, collaborative and transparent as it possibly can be. The second goal uh, was the one uh, about building the repertoires of our administrators, faculty, and staff in cultural sensitivity and diversity with the hope of ensuring greater social and psychological safe safety for students. Uh, you know that we've had two public forums. We've um, approached three different texts this year. The third one that hadn't been on the original document was White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. Uh, recently, I did poll the administrators and asked them the degree to which they felt, you know, that the learning was substantial for them. And there was an average of 3.5 out of 5 points. And then when I asked them how they felt uh, we had done with this information trickling down into their buildings, they again gave a 3.5 out of 5. 
Uh, and I, I do think that every one of our building administrators has spent some amount of time at every faculty meeting going through some of uh, the very relevant uh, kinds of information that we have tossed around, some of the things that they have presented on their own around diversity, equity, and inclusion. So it sort of is alive and well. The goal for next year would be certainly to move forward with more social justice and culturally, rel rel culturally relevant teaching. Um, as you'll remember from last time we were together, Zaretta Hammond talks about that sort of multicultural kind of celebratory thing that we do, but then there are also pieces around social justice and culturally relevant teaching. Um, and we are also looking to work with some kind of professional consultant for next year. You know that this year's consultant was tied up and had to discontinue working with Hopkinton. Dr. Cano, um, on this goal, uh, just for next year's goal, I know we're, we're not talking about those now, but since you mm -hmm. referenced, um, the two terms, the social justice and the culturally, color, culturally relevant teaching, those you're using as defined by Zaretta Hammond, like in her, in, in sort that of that document, in the, the that three document. columns. Yeah, I mean, I think that that gives you sort of a veil, like uh, I guess that thirty thousand foot view, right? Because you really only had three or four bullets on that sheet. But I think that came about for me not only from the Zaretta Hammond conversation, but when we did our focus groups on March 9th, there were a few parents who said, I think we have two different things going on here. The social justice piece is sort of the way our kids sort of interact with each other. And what does that mean when we have that lens of, you know, I can kind of stand in your shoes and understand who you are and build empathy. and. But then the culturally responsive teaching piece means that our teachers are sensitive to the fact, and I think I always use the example of, you know, we start fourth grade with a unit on the explorers, and we in some way celebrate that sort of white dominant Eurocentric, you know, kind of takeover of land. But then a subsequent unit of study is on slavery. And what happens with that is, you know, we, we sort of take a look at, it, you know, we say they were victims, but we never look at the oppressor. And I think that we don't look at the oppressor because um, it's kind of painful for us to do that, right? So when, it, when does our teaching become culturally responsive? And um, just recently, we had a student of color make an appointment with Mr. Keller who said, I have been a black student in the Hopkinton Public School for a very long time. And I feel like when, um, we have had those kinds of conversations in my classrooms or even you know just in my everyday experiences i have always been looked at as a victim and, mm. and it's very difficult to kind of go through school with that with other people looking at you through that lens so i think there's work to be done for our teachers in terms of the, the teaching itself and our curricula thank you can i ask a, a question which I, I you might have discussed at one point and i didn't hear it or I was absent. What happened to the results of the focus groups? Weren't there going to be some compiled and written responses? So what, the focus groups that we did on March 9th, you mean? Yes. Yeah, so what we ended up doing with all of that, and I think you may have gotten a copy of this. Uh, Cindy Boney had written I think a fairly extensive report and sent it back to the district. So I can forward that to you, Meg, if you don't have it now. Um, and from that information, <coughs> she and she had put together something that looked like this, and then the administrative team took that and um, made some alterations to it. Because you know our feeling was that Cindy did a really nice job of coming in and listening to everything that you know parents had to say on the 9th, and she had also put out that entire survey to the community. She had come to an admin council meeting. So I think she had a very good sense of who Hopkinton was at the time. Um, but there were just a couple of things that didn't sort of feel like us. You know, so I would say the, the changes that we made were very minimal. Okay. Yeah. It would be great if you could send that to me. I will. It yeah. doesn't seem to be in my email. Okay. Maybe I'm sorry. Maybe. Okay. I will send it out thank to all you. of you. <clears throat> yes. Thank you. I think you did walk us through a little bit, uh, shared a few highlights. Okay. Uh, I think, did. I, yeah. I, think nope. I definitely saw it. It was detailed. It, it was, was about 35 pages of, of detail. something. I can't yeah. say I committed it to memory. It may be in the <laughs> Google Drive. But it might be easier to access oh, okay. through email. Yeah. Yeah, I will definitely send it. Thank you. Maybe it's All right. Uh, the 
third goal was my NISP goal. Yesterday was our last uh, full day, the in-service day, for a new superintendent induction program. Uh, obviously, I continue to work with the mentor you know, throughout the summer, we visit about six hours a month. Um, you know, he's been to a school committee meeting. He also did a walking tour day through the middle school with, school with me. Alan was gracious enough to set up about four or five math classrooms. So we went in and we saw all levels of math being taught. Um, some of them were co-taught, you know, so it was a, a pretty interesting day. And um, I think my mentor was very impressed with what he saw there. And then a couple of months later, we went to Hopkins and we sort of looked at, uh, a lot of the co-teaching models there, and I think the co-teaching models at Hopkins are interesting because they have those adjoining classrooms. So there's a classroom, a classroom, and then that small room in between. And it was very interesting to see how many kids were in so many different places learning so many different things. Kids just kind of sprawled on the floor with laptops, other kids, you know, getting explicit instruction. It was, it was pretty interesting. So again, I think he was very impressed. Uh, and you know, NISIP continues. So. There will be more to come in the next couple of years. Did you find it helpful? I find it very helpful. In fact, they, they did ask that question yesterday. And one of the things that I think NISIP is very good at is just sort of guiding you through a timeline. You know, so that you, when you get to October, you know, the question will be, does your district have um, a strategic plan in place? Is it alive and well and thriving? Is it not so well? You know, if it's not so well, what kinds of things do you want to do to kind of rectify that? Um, do you feel like your administrative team could take it and revive it? You know, so that's kind of, and I felt like because this was a district that had a six-year plan, um, I think once you get past year three or year four, because I don't think right now we could ever predict what Hopkinton is going to look like in six years. <coughs> you know, it kind of gets to a place where you want to give it a good, thorough, you know, maybe do over. My student achievement goal was to take a look at um, our grade 10 lowest 25%. Uh, as you know, the lowest 25% in any grade level is going to constitute 62.5% of that school's score in that particular uh, domain. So the lowest 25%, for example, in English language arts um, in grade 10 will constitute 62.5% of the high school score in English language arts. So over the course of the year, we did some professional development with not only the English department, but also the special educators, and that happened in September, November, and February. There were other times when I met just with the special educators. Um, we have also brought in Ilda King that you don't see on here, and she worked with some of the people who are working with our most in intensive needs kids, and I thought she did a really nice job of, you know, I guess addressing appropriate reading material, how to generate um, and promote vocabulary acquisition with kids, how to work on sentencing, and uh, I'm hoping that all of the work that we have done in ELA, grades 6 to 12 um, in special education this year are, are going to be um, very helpful to our kids, not just in terms of testing, but in terms of reading, writing, um, and being sort of lifelong readers and writers. All right, and then the last one is the budget. I'm sure you, me, Mrs. Rothermick, everyone at home, the Chamber of Commerce, um, probably all know our budget presentation by heart, right? Because we have done it in so many places and at so many times. Hopefully Monday night at um, town meeting will be the last time that we see that. Uh, but I think that as we went through that process, we were very careful to look at what do we really need. I still say that a 6.5% increase was a very generous increase on the part of the town. It's still difficult to work within the constraints of that given our you know, sort of enormous enrollment and the, the very disparate needs of kids who are coming into our schools. Um, but I think at the end of the day, our you know, teachers and principals would say that you know, we can get the job done and get the job done job done well uh, where we are right now in, in the event that the 103 students that NESDEC predict, predicted and projected don't work out, we have that little $200,000 buffer that, that might be of help to us. Uh, one of the important slides that will be shown at town meeting is that it, when we had our 103 students, 37 of them are already here. 34 of them have enrolled in IPASS and Georgette shared with me today that 34 is no no longer the accurate answer because we have had five come in the last week. So we have hit 39. Um, so we are down to 29 spaces of our 103. 
And I know we're all giving each other that look because I do think that the enrollment is going to be pretty significant over the summer. And so we'll have to go back to the old drawing board and see what we need in terms of personnel. And we may be showing slides again, but we have 9.8 FTEs. Yep. Yep. All right, so those are all of the goals, and we'll bring this back for um, public evaluation on the 16th. So, and if so, between now and what did I say, the 13th, which is the, the Monday or Tuesday right before our next meeting, if everyone could fill out their individual ones and forward to me in some way, I will collate all of our stuff together on one document and get it to you by Wednesday night or Wednesday midday. If you get it to me by Monday, I can get it to you by Wednesday morning. And we use an online form for that, right? That the would online be my preference. fillable form. That would be my preference, <laughs> yeah. so I don't have to retype everything. You don't want down. me to use my pencil. If you did sharpen you send, it nicely for I me, I found one, but did you send one too? There's a link. If Georgia you, you just has go to one. DSE, you can find it. It's yeah, there. there is the one that came from Desi that I had handed out last time. I don't know if that's a really easy one for you to use or if you even feel like that has a lot to it. Well, that, and that and one online. that you handed out is available online. online. Mm -hmm. yeah. I asked and Georgette I can... for one, and she forwarded one to me. Oh. Is I it, don't oh, know whence yeah. it came, but it may have been from Desi. I'm not sure. It's like a document that you can, you can type, type in. into yeah. and that I then can cut and paste into it. I haven't started typing into it. I'm not sure what happens when I do that. I'm not sure if I have to if, print if it or if I can if save it. If you can't it. and I have to retype it, that's okay. But yeah. Just. Or if you have something you want us to use, then just send it. Yeah. I think we could all use that form. Right. I, I think if yeah. you, the one that, if Georgette could send that to all of us. Okay. Yeah, if, if that one works, works great. It is yeah. a Microsoft Word document, the one yeah. that, that oh, is perfect. Desi's. Yeah. That's yeah. perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. All right, then. Thank you. So that moves us in, unless, does anybody else have any questions on that? process okay that moves us then into the school committee school committee processes may I request dr. Kavner to pull that up Is it, no. possible? it must be in your okay. email no. uh, from me first <coughs> yes did you say May 1st Mina yes okay Oh, turn it off so that your all your email is not projected up onto HCAMS TV. Is this in the packet? This was an email, I think. No, this is a, pr a presentation that Mina has, correct? Okay. Okay. Yes. Just it. I don't want to jinx it, but we did manage to catch up on our schedule. Mm. Yes. Unless this is like a two-hour presentation. No. Did you hide it when you forward to you? Processes and practices. Yes. yes, thank you. There. That's it. It's not for deliberation. Yes, 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 thank you. Nice green color. Is that fine like that? Yes, thank Great. you. Great, thank um, you. So Nancy and I, as you all know, have been um, looking at some of the school committee processes. This is something we had taken permission from the school committee. This is just to give you um, some update on where we are and gather your thoughts on um, you know, anything that you see here. So if we go for the down, we've tried to put a little framework around it and the thought process behind it. Dr. Kamna, if you don't mind scrolling a little bit. Uh, so if you look at the statement, um, we know that a lot of the knowledge of how these processes currently work, the school committee processes, are in the collective body, uh, but there's no documentation, right? So the goal, you know, the thought is that we have a group of policies under the school board governance and operations. So we want to use that as the overarching guideline, if you will, for um, the processes that we want to document. And some of these processes are extremely nuanced, so we can't capture every nuance out there, but we do want to document the processes to help bring clarity, efficiency, and make sure we are all on common uh, ground with regard to understanding how these processes work. So if we move to the scope, um, if you will, um, the scope is again defined by that group of policies which are purely under how we govern, the school committee governs. 
and our operations. And of course, as part of this, if we find some efficiencies, we'll bring those forward. And if we scroll down. So the approach we are looking at is first to come up with a master list of uh, processes that we think should be uh, called out. We want to identify those. We want to look at that with the scope of, again, that broad policies that we have, the governance, and then review that list perhaps prioritize. There are a lot of things that we want to document, but we do want to prioritize which are the first ones we want to talk about. We want to draft that, come up with the first initial draft based on what we have uh, observed, and also uh, come back to the, the collective body for feedback and, of course, work with Dr. Kavanaugh um, to get her feedback in the process because we work so closely with her and a lot of these processes will involve working with her. Uh, besides that, we were also thinking of looking at best practices in other districts and for, or even other committees. Uh, you know, we hear within our town how committees are doing their business, so we can learn from that as well. So our hope was probably to go for some field trips um, and maybe we'll take some other folks too if they're mm -hmm. interested to join us and we will identify uh, which all are the places we would want to go for this field trip. And now, uh, finally, after all the feedback is in, we would publish it. So an example is, um, you know, the school committee agenda items. So how do we bring forward an agenda item onto the school committee today? So um, that is not documented, although we collectively have an understanding of how that process happens. Um, so what we did is we started off by breaking down, looking at all of the agenda items that we have uh, had in the past year. We reflected on that a little bit, broke it down by what are the categories that we have, um, how many of these came from within the school committee, which ones came from the community, um, how did we go about it. So we kind of looked at it, also tried to evaluate um, what were some of the challenges there, right? Um, so we looked at all of that, um, and if we go further down, please. Um, and also in terms of priorities, like when issues come up and agenda items get requested, how do we prioritize them? That's also into consideration. So um, if you look at it, this particular process of the agenda items can be loosely tied to the school committee meetings policy, BE. Um, that policy simply speaks to the meetings, that the kinds of meetings we have. It doesn't necessarily highlight how do you uh, bring forward an agenda item. So um, one of our action items was to come up with a brief process on bringing the agenda items for discussion, which Nancy very kindly drafted. And so we are in that step of having drafted our current process. So we want to bring it to you and to Dr. Kavanaugh for review and feedback before we take it forward. What we also realized uh, as part of that process was perhaps uh, we're having a lot of meetings, um, so perhaps an efficiency thought process was maybe a calendar of all, all the meetings that we have planned a month ahead. I think I'd heard Amanda at some point make that recommendation that, you know, where are all the places that we go to, so we could add that also. So we kind of uh, came up with a sample um, calendar, so you see, uh, you know, it's not big enough, but you can see, for instance, 6, 7, 8, which is highlighted in orange, is an annual town meeting. Um, further down, for instance, on the 23rd, uh, we have the International Night at Elmwood, mm -hmm. which we might want to attend as a school committee. Also, we have uh, at the Senior Center, the Happy Healers Club dancing with the seniors. I think that would be a fun event to attend. So things of that nature that we want to collectively attend could possibly have a calendar of sorts. We also felt a lesson learned. Do Dr. Kevin, if you don't mind oh, staying sorry. up there for just one moment, thank you. Um, was to keep track of the work we have done. You know, when we collected or pulled all the information from the agenda items, we could see the amount of work that was done, how much we reviewed, how much we uh, deliberated on all these different topics besides uh, various subcommittees we've been part of. So we felt that maybe this is, this is a thought that to look back and reflect how the past year has been and hopefully plan better for the future. Even the meetings, right, how can we get better at it? 
some um, meetings are emergency and unavoidable, but we can always be better. So these are some thoughts. So these are some suggested processes, if we go to the next slide, that we could document. So of course, the agenda items for school committee's consideration, uh, for, sorry, uh, yeah, agenda items, right? Then um, operation during the school committee meeting. I think one of the things we talked about is, let's say if a new item is brought forth on the floor of the meeting, right? We, sh we learned uh, through our last, uh, in the past year, that it's okay to not feel pressure to take action on that item. So things of that nature, we want to kind of uh, document that out so we are better prepared. So these are a few things uh, that came to our mind. Uh, the, they are all um, in italics primarily to get your feedback. We can add more um, or reduce. We would be prioritizing. So, Mina, in the terminology of the subcommittee, we would call these procedures. Okay. Does that sort of gel with yes, what you Yes, absolutely. Thinking? We can call it that. So the where the policy is kind of sort of like the law, that's mm -hmm. the, the procedure is operationally how we go about doing our job. That's right. Okay, just to clarify for people watching. Sure. So that so these would hang under our policies like yeah, our other procedures do for everything else. Absolutely. So we can yes. absolutely change the terminology to procedures if that makes most sense. Okay. Um, and then there is a proposal for a timeline, um, identifying the processes to be defined, prioritize, and commit to them that, okay, we are going to do this for the next upcoming year, uh, hopefully June. Nancy, I threw some dates out there. Uh, I think they're reasonable. Um, I think there are challenges with meeting any of those dates, timely feedback from everyone, um, competing priorities. We're always in so many meetings doing so much stuff. So. If we slip up, um, there is a possibility. Mm. Uh, and the second is then moving on to identify the resources for best practices, as I was mentioning. Um, document prioritized processes, seek your feedback, finalize and publish. Um, and we might need some support there with regard to publishing, whether it's linking to a policy or perhaps some help from Mr. Ghosh. Uh, we'll have to figure that out. And then, of course, identify the processes for consideration for the following year. We, we want to make sure that by next year, we have completed a certain chunk of work, whatever processes we identify, and then have prioritized the next slot, if you will. That's the thought process. Dr. Kavner, if you don't mind going back up um, <coughs> just for that list of processes. So I would really appreciate um, everyone's feedback on some of these items that we have listed out. If there are any thoughts on, you know, is there something that you are confused about or, or there's some ambiguity there that you would want us to prioritize and um, list out? And I know I've been the one talking all through, but uh, it has not been just me. Uh, I've worked with Nancy. Nancy, please. But you did a lovely job putting together the conversations we had. So. I think you did a great job, both of you, Mina. This looks good. I think um, the things that you've listed, um, taking it back to last summer when you were talking about sort of a new school committee member orientation, pro this type, this is the type of stuff that you just no don't necessarily know how to do when you show up. So it's nice to have it written out. Um, from your timeline perspective, maybe I would recommend maybe picking two or three yeah. and just yeah. seeing how it works. Because if we pick two or three and they take us six months to get those two or three done, then we'll know maybe we have ambitious sort of goals of achieving this in, a, in, a, in the timeline you've set out. But yes, just to absolutely. see what, how, what it's like. Because if, if it only takes a couple of weeks to get two or three done, then we're golden. You know? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Uh, feedback well taken. In fact, the, it is not the goal to complete all of this in this year at all. It, it, the first goal is to create that master list, if you will, mm -hmm. and then prioritize and pick the ones that we can possibly do. So your okay. suggestion of four, three to four sounds good as a good starting point. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I second your comments. I think this is great. Um, some, it's, some of them, when the work originates with Dr. Kavanaugh or with um, Mr. Rothermick, I mean, I think 
it's a little easier to be led along. So mm -hmm. I feel less at sea because there is a professional to guide us. You know, I think when we initiate the work, like creating a subcommittee, there I feel kind of at sea. So there are definitely some that jump out to me as more urgent. Um, even like how to get something on the agenda, I think, um, in a way that is you know transparent and equitable and so forth. I think those things are they hit our, us operationally every day. Um, so there are a few among the list that to me we we wrote language up for that. Na okay. Nancy did a great job. Um, we we'll bring that back for discussion. Yes. Yeah. We so we want to circle back with Dr. Cavanaugh too, yes. um, and then bring right. that back. Right. Whereas things like the budget process, where we are in it, we are led through it nicely by mm -hmm. our professionals so that's it's helpful so you know I feel like there's probably more to know but I mm -hmm. for me I think when we look at priorities the ones where like the buck stops with us it starts and stops with us and we have to sort of figure out how to do it um, I think those bubble up for me sounds great and um, you know feel free to send your thoughts on uh, any ones that you feel should be prioritized okay. we can pick those up Perfect. This is a good idea. Great work. Thank, mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So at this point, we would have our second opportunity for public comment. We have not managed to draw any um, live viewers in, so we will move over that. And I would seek at this time, um, let's do the items by consensus, and then following that, we can entertain a motion to enter it back into executive session. All right, so as superintendent, I recommend that the school committee vote to approve the items by consensus as outlined in your agenda. So moved. Um, I have a, a minute's correction. Okay. Sorry. Good. I, was, I was wondering if they were going to be in there. I read them this time. No. <laughs> I always read Good. them. Um, no, it's a minor thing, but I thought it was relevant because it came up at the Know Your Vote forum, mm -hmm. and um, it's something that we actually did some due diligence on and I wanted it to be captured in the minutes and it was related to the bus parking lot mm -hmm. and the fact that we looked into, um, we talked about it specifically looked into whether um, additions on the back of the high school okay. would be impacted and they wouldn't be. Which, right. which um, minutes? Uh, sorry, That's it was okay. the minutes from March 21st, okay. item G, the school bus parking lot. And I just, some notes to reflect the specific discussion on the HHS expansion and the fact that um, the bus parking lot will not impact our ability to put on the two over two right. over two six classrooms on the back just because right. it, it is something that we specifically asked about which, which is what brought it back in the first place I mm -hmm. think and the community then brought it up again so I want to know that we looked at that that was um, also a discussion on social media yeah there was a big uh, okay mm -hmm. there was. and we did the so, we did the work on that and I think we should make sure make people sure know that we looked okay. at that specifically um, okay, so should we pull those minutes out from the um, items by consensus and I can make those adjustments and we'll bring them back? Does that sound Perfect. good? Okay. Okay. okay, so we will okay. pull that the March 21st ones out from consideration uh, and return to the motion that um, Mina had made. And is there a second to, uh, well, first we want to amend it. The, is there a friendly amendment to exclude the March 21st minutes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, and I'm looking for a second. Second. Okay. okay. What's a friendly amendment? I don't know. <laughs> I think we can just because get her taken. original motion was to approve the the items by consensus. Okay. A friendly amendment is to exclude from the original. Okay. The March 21st one. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm sorry. I now I've lost. Who was the second on that? Meg. Meg. Meg is a second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Yes. yes. So at this time, then, we will go back to our executive session. I would seek a motion to enter into executive session to comply with or act under the authority of MGL C30AS21A2, specific to conducting strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-unit personnel, the director of student services, because having the discussion in an open meeting would have a detrimental effect on the school committee's bargaining position and to reconvene in open session for the purposes of adjournment. So I'm so looking moved. for motion by Meg. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mina. We'll have a roll call. I'll start with you, Amanda. Aye. Meg. Aye. Jen. Yes. Aye. And I am also a yes. So we will um, move into A219 again, because I can't tell if that other room is locked. And we will be back shortly.